Okay, so let's start to look at some of these problems one at a time and try and identify what could be the cause of a child's con conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Here's an example. A neonate is born and has persistent direct hyperbilirubinemia and you notice syndromic abnormal facies. What should you suspect? The answer is allergial syndrome. Let's look at allergials a little bit more carefully. The signs and symptoms of allergials are generally related to a number of different organs that can be involved. First, we will see cholestasis in these children. They will have a conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, and that cholestasis may result in liver problems as well. Frequently, these children have congenital heart disease, something like Tetralogy of Fallot, so a murmur is often appreciated. And lastly, these children can develop posterior embryo toxin in the eye, which may cause problems down the road and is something that you have to watch out for. So here are some examples of some patients with syndromic facies consistent with allergials. You can notice triangular facies, a large prominent forehead, a wide nasal bridge, a small pointed chin, and deep set eyes. These are all findings consistent with the allergial syndrome. This disease is autosomal dominant. It's a defect in the short arm of chromosome 20 on 20p12. And they usually have de novo mutations. That is to say, the parent doesn't have allergials. This is a new mutation. But absolutely, you want to get a family history as well. What you'll find on these patients if you were to biopsy them is a paucity of intralobar bile ducts, including hepatic development, leading to cholestasis. And you can see that around the bile ducts, we have some inflammation here and some problems. So let's look at how we would make a definitive diagnosis. Typically in these children, we need to see three of five physical features. We need to see evidence of cholestasis, and then we'll usually end up doing a liver biopsy in these children. For patients with mild disease, we'll treat them with ursodeoxycholic acid. This helps facilitate bile flow through the abnormal biliary tract and allows the liver to not be so backed up. Remember that patients with liver failure may develop pruritus or itching, and it can be very severe and generally we'll treat that symptomatically with an antihistamine like diphenhydramine or Benadryl. For patients with severe disease, they often proceed to liver transplant. Remember that in patients with this problem, they're going to have a decrease of ability to absorb fat-soluble vitamins. These children require extra supplementation of the fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, and they also often get zinc as well. 